Hello and welcome to this episode of Simulation TV. My name is Sean Gedman and today we're going to go over simulation in action, simulation mold flow, uh, specifically on the topic of cool fem uh, when you're working with a CAD assembly. So our problem description, description for today is we're basically going to go through an exercise that will look at setting up and running a cool fem analysis. Uh, cool fem analysis is basically finite element method of solving rather than the traditional boundary element method that we've had for several years so far. So some key learning objectives that we'll go through during this presentation are going to be of course a brief overview on cool fem, uh, some modeling procedure when you're dealing with a CAD assembly. There are some other procedures that we can cover in later videos uh, that are a more manual process or using some of the tools within Synergy to accomplish this as well, but we'll save those for another video and overview those tools in a little more detail. Uh, of course, we're going to review some of the process settings and then overview of a few key results for this analysis sequence. Now, some of the modeling entities that you'll work with during this or in this analysis sequence your cooling channels and, and beams and hoses are going to be 1D beams. Your part can be 3D or dual domain. Dual domain is something that is new for 2013, so if um, you're, you don't have this option in dual domain, then make sure you're running a version 2013 or newer in InSight. Your mold is going to be modeled and it's going to be in 3D tetrahedrals. And if you have any inserts, part inserts, mold inserts, those will also be in represented by 3D tetrahedrals. So general workflow that we'll go through um, is that first we're going to cover some CAD model preparation just to get ready for your export out of your CAD package and, and make it easy to import it into our software. And then what you would do typically is import your geometry We'll look at some mesh settings, specifically, you know, maybe define some different local mesh densities. You'll create your part mesh, create a surface mesh on the mold. Of course, check that surface mesh for any defects, and then we would create a 3D mold mesh from there, and you would be ready to run your analysis at that point. So just some things to keep in mind during your preparation in your cap package for export, just some things to, to be ready. Um, basically, you want to include everything, all the solids that you want to be included with your analysis there. So this would be your mold halves with the drillings for both the cooling and feed system, your part, your feed system, any type of insert. Um, some things you might not want to include here would be, you know, if you have any uh, bolts, things of like that, that, that don't need to be included in this analysis, this would be a good time to remove those or suppress those features before the export process. So another step, of course, we have to keep in mind is for cooling lines, we, we want to have uh, some IGES curves created here create some IGES curves for an export. So what we want to do is essentially create curves at the center of the holes that represent our cooling lines. Um, of course, any curves for bubblers or baffles here. And we want to extend these curves just a little bit outside of our mold block so we can model those as hoses. Um, of course, we want to have a portion of the cooling system, the inlet and outlet, at least extend it out side of the, uh, the mold boundary here, mold block. So at this point, what we've been working to in our preparation is we should have two CAD files or we're going to, to go for two CAD files here. The first one is going to be our mold block, our part, um, any inserts, basically the, the, the solids that we want to export second component or second file that we would need would be our IGES curves representing our cooling lines here. So um, you'll want to create your second part or your second CAD file as an IGES export using these options here. 
So now we'll go on to our demo where I'll show you some of these tools. Are we still good? Yep. Okay. All right. So some of the first steps we wanted to go over, we covered some of the general prep work for uh, setting up your, your model. So at this point you have your, your CAD assembly that has all your solid models in it. Um, again, your mold halves, your inserts, your part, geometry. And then we have our second file, which is an IGES file with our curves that represent the center, just the center line of our cooling circuits. So we'll go through this exercise. I have a SAT file here. We're going to go with uh, solid 3D. And what this has is it's, it's my mold boundary now and all my components, it has my part, um, my inserts, my mold, uh, core and cavity halves, uh, everything included in here other than the IGES curves, of course. So at this point, we have it imported. To get our cooling lines in here, the second file, we'll do an add. We'll come down here to my IGES file. You could see that brings my curves in now and adds it to the rest of our geometry here. So from this point, we're going to set our analysis sequence down here like you would. You have a cool fem. And you'll see this gives us some additional things in our um, task tree here, our study panel here. Now we have create 3D mold mesh, uh, some, some circuits here, things of that nature. So again, like with any analysis, you want to run down this list to make sure you have all your green check marks here before you can launch your analysis. So once you have all this in there, what you're going to do, and you have your analysis sequence set, you could set your material at this point as well if you wanted to. I'm going to use a generic polypropylene. Um, now from this point, we want to kind of clean our curves or our IGES curves to get rid of anything that may have been left behind from, from our modeling and our CAD program. So I'm going to hide the other layers. You can see we have some just some residual lines here we're going to get rid of just by clicking on them and hitting the delete key on your keyboard. Once you have all, all those deleted, essentially what we need to do at this point is assign our properties. So we would, to do that, you would just click on your lines that you want to assign using your control key if you want to do several components at one time. And then right click. You can go to properties. It's telling me that there are no properties assigned. Do I wish to do that this time? So yes. And I'm going to call this a channel. Diameter of eight millimeters for this exercise. You can see our channel's now blue, indicating that it's a channel property. Uh, the small extensions outside of my mold block, we're going to use the same thing, but we're going to call this a hose. And hose is much like a cooling channel, only rather than taking into consideration heat transfer and pressure it's just going to uh, factor into our pressure calculations across our circuit here. So we'll leave at 10 millimeters. You can see that's now gray. Uh, from this point, I'd assign the other curves. Of course, this would also be a channel, some hoses, and a baffle. But I'll save us on that and move on to some of the other things that we need to do here, which would be assigning properties to some of our other CAD bodies here. It's going to show some of my other layers. Our boundary, we would click these. Again, control key to select multiple components. 
go into properties or right click change properties and in here we're going to call it a uh, mold block 3D. Now I have an insert in here. We would use the same procedure. Just click on it, right click, change properties, and we make this a mold insert 3D for our exercise. So now that we have all our properties assigned, what we need to look into maybe a, a little closer would be um, maybe a mesh densities because you know your part might want to be meshed a little finer than the rest of it or your cooling lines, your feed system. So to do that, you're going to come into your mesh tools and you just see density here. And then you would select your surfaces that need a different density. So if we, in this case, I would do uh, the cooling lines, the feed system, and the part would be uh, uh, definitely a finer mesh than our mold boundary, so I would assign something smaller to them. So my feed system, my cooling lines, I'll do on this one 0.8 millimeters, the part will be 1.4 millimeters, and then I'll do the mold boundary at 4 millimeters. And to do that, you just select your surface, you tell it you want to um, do something other than your global edge length that you'll use during meshing and enter your value. So once you have all your mesh density specified, what we would do from this point is just hide all of our other components and we would mesh our part uh, using the standard meshing procedures. Uh, once the part is meshed, we would come into here and we would then mesh our mold boundary. Now, we implemented this separate mesh tool and what this does is it, it ignores the part um, elements so that we can mesh it safely without interfering with them and what we would do is come in here generate mesh and typically what I do it's an important step here is that we will stop after surface mesh generation what this is going to do is basically just mesh the boundary of your mold block so that we can check it for errors once we verify there are no errors we would then go to 3d So we can mesh now. All right, now that we have our surface mesh here, you can see it mesh the, the mold block, it mesh the cooling lines. You can mesh the cooling lines with the mold block if you wish. Um, sometimes if you want to, you can isolate these or turn these off, mesh them later if you didn't want to use the, the global edge length that you're assigning to uh, the mold boundary itself. So we have a mold boundary there. Um, from this point, you would uh, check for defects. One helpful tip for that would be to isolate these. You know, what each these components will be meshed on its own layer. So what you can do is come into some of these these CAD bodies, hide all other layers, mesh statistics. We'll go to triangles since it's triangular elements, not tetrahedrals yet and then you would restrict the visible entities. So I typically review each one of these layers independently from one another um, because we have multiple mesh types going on here. We have a 3D part, uh, we have some beams for your cooling lines, and, and of course triangles here. So it just makes it a little easier to, to interpret and go through and, and figure out what's going on where in your part because again a lot of components a lot of different mesh types here so when you do this you can show 
and mainly what we're looking for here, any free edges, any uh, you know, multiple connectivity regions, bad aspect ratios, things uh, to that effect that could influence or cause problems when going to our 3D mesh here. Now, uh, the next step, of course, we verify that all these have had, um, all these components are clean. So what we would do is come up here to 3D mold mesh and just uh, mesh now. And what this is going to do is turn uh, your 3D mold blocks into a 3D mesh now. All right, now that my uh, mold blocks meshed in the 3D, some things that we would do from this point is just the, the final steps. And that would be, of course, assigning an inlet to our hoses here, the ends of our hoses. We need one for each circuit. Um, and that's done just as you would for any other cooling analysis up in your, on your home tab here, boundary conditions. You have cooling channel, cooling inlet. From this point, uh, you'd set your injection cone as well on your uh, top of your sprue and your part. Uh, make sure all of your check marks are here and you're ready to run. So from this point, what we're going to kind of determine is what type of uh, FEM cool analysis we want to run because uh, the, the steady state or the BEM analysis, boundary element method, it runs a steady state analysis. The finite element method, which we're working with today, will give you three options. So you can find these options within your process settings, right here under your mold temperature options. So you'll have average within cycle, which is very similar to, uh, it, it's a steady state analysis. So in theory, it's, it's similar to the boundary element method, however, we use a different method. We're using the finite element method to uh, achieve our result here. But the, the temperatures are average through the cycle. So that theory kind of remains consistent with the other cool solver. We have transient within cycle, which will actually give you a temperature history throughout the cycle for the part from injection all the way through uh, cooling. And then we have a transient from production startup so what this is going to do is it's essentially going to run your transient within cycle multiple times until it achieves a steady state. Um, and then it will run the transient within cycle from that point. So basically what this is telling us is how many cycles and how long is it going to take before our uh, process is stabilized and where our, our, our cycle temp our temperature within the mold is consistent from that cycle forward. And then, of course, just like um, the other cool solver, you also have the choice to either run a specified analysis where you would tell us how long it is, or you can run an automatic analysis, which would um, be determined by uh, the, the temperature and uh, frozen layer fraction or froze, percent frozen of the part. So I've run one of each to just give you a brief overview of some of the results and some of the things you can expect from each one of these analyses. So the first one, of course, was the average, which you recall is within uh, the temperatures averaged over the cycle, steady state essentially. So some of the results we typically look at here, aside from you know flow rates, Reynolds numbers, to make sure that we have um, optimum efficiency in our, our cooling lines. Uh, and, you know, check that our uh, thermolators within capacity are capable of pumping this. We would look at maybe some part temperatures, but generally mold temperature is one that's really important with, with this one because we want to see the temperature, um, maybe history over our, uh, our inserts, our mold, and our part. So um, the average one, what we typically do is take a look at the temperature mold, averaged. Turn a cutting plane on so we can see within 
the mold block. Take a look. So you can see it's showing us some temperature distributions throughout the part here and or the mold block itself. Uh, you'll notice that it is a temperature scale. So again, average throughout the cycle. This is uh, a temperature range. You can't animate it throughout the cycle. Okay, so now that we've looked at our uh, results to average through the cycle, we'll look at some of the, the transient within the cycle. And what this is going to do, I have a graph up here that I've set up already, and it's, it's going to show us the temperature history throughout the cycle from when the plastic's injected up to when it's an ejected from the mold. So um, some of the important things we'll look at here first is in the logs. We can take a look here and with the average cycle, it's just going to give you a min and max temperature over the cycle. This particular one's going to give us uh, some min and max temperatures, and it's going to tell us specifically when in the cycle it occurred. So for this one, our max was, of course, at injection at that moment before it had a chance to contact the mold wall and start cooling down. And the minimum is generally going to be right before ejection. but. Um, you know, you can see these temperatures and when they occur. The other thing to note is analysis time. So that steady state analysis, the first one we looked at, that only took about eight minutes to run. This one here is gonna take about 30 minutes. Uh, the one we'll look at next will take about uh, an hour and a half to run because you're running several iterations there. So keep that in mind when you're selecting which one of these you wanna use as well fit it to your needs as well as, um, you know, stay within practicality, you know, you don't want to run uh, maybe a, a full transient at startup if, if you're not really concerned at how long it takes to, for your cycle to stabilize. Maybe uh, a transient would be adequate or maybe uh, average would be adequate if you're just kind of evaluating your cooling lines and pressures across those cooling lines. So this is a useful plot I use. Again, temperature mold. Um, and this is an XY plot that I created. I picked a portion in the mold right on the inside corner of the part, um, actually on our insert here. And you can see the temperature history throughout that cycle. So this is pretty helpful. You can take a look, um, you know, maybe at this range, see how big of a range uh, is occurring. Uh, because one of the big benefits of steady state over these, um, this one, the transient, and the transient within startup, is that the transient analysis, they're good for results or models that might have a huge range in temperature throughout the cycle, or, or maybe from region to region, you can capture that rather than averaging it through the cycle um, and, and just give you a better or a more accurate representation of what's going on here. So our second one you can see is a, li a little busy here, but um, this particular scenario, um, I'll show you in the logs here, it had to run 42 iterations to reach uh, steady state condition. And you can see that's what it's doing in the graph. It's starting up and it's, it's coming, it's starting to level out and hit its steady state here. So what this analysis is telling me in addition to the transient results that we're seeing is that um, essentially how long it's going to take the process to stabilize. So in this case for this part, if I look in our logs, it's going to take 42 cycles for this particular part to uh, stabilize in its process, which given over that cycle time that we're using for this to produce this part would take about 24 minutes and 30 seconds to, to occur. And again, you can see this, this result's going to take significantly longer, about, about an hour and a half compared to the average cycle time and the average within the cycle and the transient within the cycle. All right, so hopefully if you learned something uh, in our overview of the cool FEM solver. Um, if you have any other questions, please refer to our help or some of the other videos that are out there or will be soon to come. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.